This is Missions Encounter. This is Brother Ron Waters. And I'm coming to you from Souls Harbor Tabernacle Church in Paducah. And we have uh, some scriptures here today for you uh, concerning healing. Seems like there's so much sickness and disease going on. In fact, there may be, according to some of the experts, more sickness and disease than what we realized. However, you know, <clears throat> I believe that uh, sometimes you just can't get the truth. Hello? Uh, sometimes you can't uh, depend upon the social medias or the, uh, uh, the networks, the news networks and things that we have. Some of them report different things. So you have to seek out the truth. Uh, but I know that we're in trying times, and certainly the devil is working overtime, all that he can, and he knows the time is short. He knows his time is short. And, you know, he knows, he knows what his end, end is going to be. Uh, eternal fire and judgment uh, in the lake of fire, along with the, uh, the Antichrist and the beast, and those according into uh, Revelation there. So, uh, the Lord was kind of dealing with me about a scripture that, uh, as I was coming into town this morning, and it kept going through my mind, and I, I was uh, thinking I was quoting it right, so I looked it up, and <clears throat> it's out of the 8th chapter of Romans, verses 3 and 4. What the law, concerning Moses' law, the Ten Commandments, you know, that were given in the Old Testament, uh, what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin, condemned sin in the flesh, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit, the righteousness of the law. Now the righteousness of the law is Christ in us. And we, we won't become righteous, we can't become righteous on our own. And we have no righteousness that is pleasing to God. According to the book of Isaiah, our righteousness is as filthy rags in the sight of God. So in order for us to get to God, to where he is, after the fall of man in the third chapter of Genesis, where sin entered into the picture, and death by sin. Before that, Adam and Eve, you know, they, they could have lived for, who knows, uh, certainly uh, a long time, because they were created perfect, uh, and they were, they were, there were no sin. They didn't know sin. They didn't know what sin is. They didn't know wrong and right, good and evil, until... Their eyes were opened when they disobeyed God and took of the forbidden fruit uh, from the knowledge or from the tree of life. And then God drove them out of the garden so that they wouldn't eat from the fruit of the, of the tree uh, of life. Uh, of, uh, they ate from one tree and gained the knowledge of good and evil, but there was another tree called the, the tree of life. If they'd ate from that tree in their fallen state that they were in, if they would have ate of the life tree, they would have lived forever in their sins. But God made a way. He saw what was in man. The Bible says uh, Jesus saw what was in man. He said, I don't need that any man show me what is in man. I have known man from the beginning. And that uh, uh, he, needs, he needs redemption. He needs the righteousness of God. To become righteous, we have to receive the righteousness of God. There's no way that we can find uh, the source of righteousness of man. There is no righteousness of man, our righteousness, as long as we're in the flesh. That's what's so great about the born-again experience, because we're born again. We're, we, uh, are, we, are come, we come to Christ. We have the, Christ, the Spirit of Christ living in us. We are changed. Uh, 1 Corinthians, uh, I believe it is, chapter 5 and verse 17, where he said, If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. 
Behold, all things are become new. Old things are passed away. All things are become new. We're changed completely. That word creature in the original uh, was translated creation. So he recreates in us, or he creates in us rather, the, uh, the eternal life spirit that comes from Christ, the spirit of Christ, in us so that we may become righteous like he is. And without that, we cannot obtain any righteousness that is pleasing to God. Our righteousness, no matter how good we are, no matter how many good deeds we do, and there's a lot of people trying to get to heaven on good deeds, and, you know, just be a good citizen, just be a good person, you know, don't hurt anybody, and, and uh, some people, they wouldn't step on a flea uh, because they're afraid that uh, they, would, uh, they would not be uh, able to enter into the next life in, in the state of eternal life. And so there's a lot of, dis, a lot of beliefs that are uh, based upon just false doctrine, things like this, and in many different uh, places of the world where they haven't seen the light of Christ, where Christ has not been revealed to them, or they have not accepted uh, Christ, and they have not received the righteousness of God in them. So he said that law of Moses was weak through the flesh. It did nothing for the flesh except condemn the flesh. There was a bunch of do's and don'ts, and nobody could fulfill it. Nobody could live it until Christ came along, and he came, and he said, I've not come away, come to, to do away with the law, but I've come to fulfill the law. The law was fulfilled in him, and the, his righteousness becomes our righteousness, and we can be righteous in him. The law could not do this, and... But he, God saw a way. He brought his own son into the world in flesh, in the flesh, sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin and condemned sin in the flesh. The reason he condemned sin in the flesh is because Christ, he lived in the flesh as we are, yet he sinned not. There was no guile found in his mouth. He did not sin. And he was tempted in the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights, and he fasted during that time. And uh, the devil come to him. There's three recorded uh, incidents where he, he, he came to him to tempt him. And Jesus said each time, and he answered with the word of God. He said, it is written, thou shalt not serve any other gods but the true God. And, and he, he, each time that he, he answered the devil, he answered him with the word of God. But the devil slipped up. If you want to, and I preached a message on that. It's on... Uh, uh, on YouTube here or on uh, Facebook uh, and yeah it's on both of them I guess and so that when the devil said it is written and that was the title of it the devil said it was written because he told Christ he said well it's written you know and he reminded him back in the Old Testament in the book of Psalms and he actually misquoted it a little bit but he re recognized that the Word of God was written and he recognized the purpose of the Word of God he slipped up <laughs> and so, uh, but I want to deal with sickness and healing today because much of it has to do with our righteous man, with our condition, our spiritual condition. And, you know, health was natural and eternal before the fall of man. They lived in health. They, they had no problems with health. Uh, and uh, you can read that in the uh, first and second chapter of Genesis. And both death and sickness originated with sin and are now being propagated by Satan himself. You can read scriptures in chapter 5 of Romans. I'm going to run through this quickly, so I hope that you jotting these scriptures down. And in Job chapter 2 and in Luke chapter 13 and verse 16, John 10 and 10 and Acts 10 38. John 10 and 10 says, he said, uh, the enemy comes not but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But he said, I've come to give life and life more abundantly. And Acts 10, 38, it says how, Jesus, uh, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power, who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed of the devil. And so oppression comes from the devil, comes because of the result of sin in man and the curse of sin. Now the first uh, 
first recorded bodily affliction came through wrongdoing in chapter 20 of Genesis. The first recorded healing was by the prayer of a prophet in Genesis 20. And God made covenants with his people to heal them in Exodus chapter 15, verse 26. You find also in Leviticus and Deuteronomy and in Matthew and 1 Peter and James 5 and 4. Now, 1 Peter uh, 2.24, uh, it says, Who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, being dead to sins, should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes you were healed. You see, through him we can be dead to sin. And we, we are alive in him. We can't be both. You can't be, uh, I heard a Baptist preacher say the other day on the radio, and uh, I was a little surprised to hear it, hear a Baptist preacher say this, but he said uh, that he heard somebody say that he was a saved, a saved sinner. And he said, well, how could that be? How can you be saved and a sinner? You're either one or the other. And I thought, good for you, brother. You got it right. Because we're not sinners saved by grace, but we were sinners, and now we are saved by by grace. We're no longer sinners at all. And we're no longer bound to sin. We're no longer under that curse. God made covenants with his people. And God was always, he kept his covenants and has healed multitudes by spiritual means. Psalms 103 and verse 3, which says, He forgiveth all my iniquities, healeth all of my diseases. And in spiritual Spiritual means to heal is all that God promised and commanded, Exodus 15, 26, where he said the curse of the law was a sickness and disease. It says in verse 26, If thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and wilt do that which is right in his sight, and wilt give ear to his commandments, and keep all his statutes, I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which I have brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that healeth thee. Now the Egyptians was a reference to sin in this world, it was a reference to uh, ungodliness. And of course they had many gods in old, in old uh, Egypt. And in fact, there are many gods over there yet. And so they, and they but they worshiped them and they built images to them. And I won't go get into that how many there are, but there are, Several there. In fact, there was ten plagues upon Egypt, and some say that was one plague for each god that they had, that uh, they worshipped. Spiritual means were used in the wilderness of Israel, and healings came because uh, of uh, God's leading, leading them, uh, leading spirit, God's leader Moses, and healing was promised on condition of obedience. In Leviticus 26. Now God permits Satan to afflict sinners and even his own people when they go astray to bring them to repentance. And you can read Job chapter 33. He talks about that. And in Psalms, uh, David talked about, he said, I before I was afflicted, he said, I went astray. And you know, sometimes God does allow people to get, Christian people, to get sick uh, in order to kind of uh, remind them, hey, uh, you're not your own. The Bible says you're not your own. You're bought with a price. You're to glorify God and your body and your spirit, which belong to God. Now, when you give your heart and life to God, you know, you're his property. And you can't just do anything you want to do and still remain uh, uh, in his sheepfold, you might say. Still remain with God because sin separates God and man. So we must keep sin out and let let God have his way in uh, in our hearts and lives and God always healed with lessons and uh, when lessons were learned and men repented and uh, health as well as healing was promised when men met certain conditions Christ came to redeem from both sin and sickness Isaiah 53 I want to read a portion uh, of that chapter Isaiah 53, it's one of the greatest chapters on healing. And it says, 
Who hath believed our report? To whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? And it's talking about Christ here. He shall grow up before him as a tender plant and a root out of a dry ground. He hath no form nor commonness. When we shall, when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. But he was, but he was wounded. Verse 5, but he was wounded for our transgressions, not for his transgressions. He had no transgressions. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. There was no iniquities in him. It was because of us. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. You know, he was chastised so that we may have peace. And with his stripes... We are healed. So because of the stripes that he received upon his back, these were, uh, some say they were 39 stripes. They always stopped at 39 lest they go over 40 because 40 stripes was the, uh, the typical punishment. And if they went over 40 stripes, uh, then, uh, now I heard this that, uh, I don't know, I may be incorrect about this, but the one doing the whipping would end up uh, having to be uh, tried for th for that, and it was it was just a law, just something that they they had to stick to, and so they stopped many times at thirty nine. They knew they and the reason they could stop at thirty nine is because the the whip they were using for that had thirteen uh, thirteen uh, layers or thir thirteen. Uh, strips of, of leather or however they did that and now on the end of each one was a uh, sewn in a piece of metal sharp metal but 13 times 3 is 39 and so that way if they did I don't know if it's if it was done correctly in the passion of Christ they kept whipping him and everything uh, I'm not I'm not sure uh, I, I would just imagine I've always just imagined there was he was whipped three times with that thing, and each time it was 13 stripes, and 13 stripes, and 13 stripes. And that alone tore the flesh off his back. His bones were exposed, and uh, that made 39 stripes. And someone else said, and, and I, I read somewhere, that there are 39 major diseases in the world. Everything can be classified into 39 major diseases. And when you, when you look at that, you know, it all comes together. It all, it all makes sense. He was wounded for our transgressions. By his stripes, we are healed. Every disease, every sickness, everything comes into, under the categories of 39 major sicknesses and diseases. Then all of that, has the price for our healing has been paid. We have a right to claim our healing as a child of God. Claim our healing because the price has been paid. It's already there. All we have to do is cash in on it. Hello? And why shouldn't we believe for great things as far as healing in our bodies and healing in our spiritual mind and our soul and everything? Health as well as healing was promised. And Christ came to redeem from both sin and sickness. Healing is in fulfillment of prophecy. And Jesus proved his sonship by healing all men. Matthew chapter 4 says he healed them all. Great multitudes came to him. Matthew 11 said he healed them all. Luke, Luke chapter 4 and Acts 10 38. And so every disciple called and sent by Christ was given power to heal. Matthew chapter 10, if you look at that, verse uh, 1 through 8. Jesus gave his disciples power against all unclean spirits and devils and, and against all diseases, against all of these sicknesses and diseases. Many times some of those are, are caused by uh, the demon power that uh, 
will, you know, if you get you get a devil in you, you're going to be, you're not going to be feeling so well. You're not going to be uh, very healthy. And that devil is out to destroy you. That's his purpose. He's there to destroy you and, and to drag you into the pits of hell. But you can be delivered and set free. I've seen people, uh, the demons leave people when they were prayed for. Oh, we don't like to hear that much, brother. Uh, we don't do that in our church, you know. We just we just pray for them, you know. And uh, God will do the work. No, you've got to cast them out. Jesus told his disciples, cast them out. I'll give you power to cast them out. And if you've ever encountered anything like that, uh, it's, <laughs> I mean, you're head button with the devil. And he put up a, he'll put up a fight. Amen. And he doesn't want to come out. But through the power uh, of the Holy Ghost, through the power that Jesus give and authority that he give, he give us, we can cast out devils. He said these signs would follow them that believe in Mark chapter, chapter uh, 16. And unless I misquote that, uh, let me, uh, let me uh, read that to you. Mark chapter 16. And verse 15, Go ye into all the world, preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. These signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils, they shall speak with new tongues, they shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. All right, we're going to close it up right there. Go with God, He will go with you. And may the Lord be with you. Let me pray a prayer for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for every sick person. Every, I pray for every sinner. Lord, that you would touch them right now in the name of Jesus. Heal them from head to toe as they believe on you, accept you now in Jesus' name.